If you are currently or will be attending post-secondary education in Ontario 2019, listen carefully, because what we are about to say involves every student. Firstly, fees are about to increase. Domestic or international, it does not matter. Let me tell you the hard truth behind the OSAP cuts. For some students, their struggles are about to get worse. You might not have all these difficulties, but here's why you should still care. Do you want to pay additional tuition? Do you want more loans from OSAP? Increased program fees? No more funding for clubs? No more student unions and a potential threat to campus life? Some won't be able to attend school. Interest will accumulate. Students will graduate with more debt than ever before. And now you might need to save up to help pay the bills. This might be the reality for low-income families, who will no longer get free tuition. With the recent OSEP changes, it's clear that it doesn't favor students. In fact, it contributes to mental health issues. If we break this down, we are losing much more than we gain. The pros include a 10% tuition decrease and that OSEP will be continued to be sustained for future generations. However, here are the cons. During the six-month grace period, interest will start to accumulate immediately. Potential threats to student unions, clubs, societies, student services, food banks, dental services, and campus events. Less grants and more loans from OSAP in general for all students. Tuition will no longer be free for low-income students. The university will lose $360 million in revenue and $80 million in revenue for colleges. Also note that universities were not consulted about these changes. They didn't even get the chance to prepare for this hit. We are putting students first. But you did not, but you did not, so you're saying you did not consult with post-secondary education institutions about this? We, we've had many discussions with many, many people. Uh, and the students but but, spe but but specifically I'm just, I'm just trying to confirm here specifically did you consult with them because these are the groups uh, according to the statistics that uh, this cut could cost universities 360 million dollars a year colleges 80 million dollars. tuition may not be the only source of income however 360 million dollars and 80 million dollars how do you think they will make up for this loss for example the varsity reports that since 2005 Every time U of T has seen a reduction in domestic revenues, they have raised international students' tuition. Because of this precedent set by the provincial government, the city of Mississauga has also ended a $10 million aid to U of T. This loss in revenue could also contribute to a lower quality of education. Overall, this will cause more stress and worry for students. All of these things don't help the problem, it makes education less accessible which shouldn't be the case since education provides self-fulfillment. Marilee Fullerton, the Ontario Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities said, OSAP will help students that are in most need. However, this doesn't make any sense since low-income students are the ones in most need. This plan will eliminate the six-month grace period. This was meant to give students ample time to find a job suited to their experiences. Without it, with interest accumulating, the day after graduation, students will feel the pressure to find whatever job is available. You don't believe that it's going to put a further burden on students if suddenly the interest starts accruing immediately? Well, the, the, the real burden on students is what the Liberals have done by subsidizing higher and higher tuition with an with unsustainable OSAP program. OSAP is an integrated program between the Ontario government and federal government. Therefore, the blame cannot be given to only one provincial representative. Who knows what they will negotiate with the colleges or universities to help make up the loss of revenue. The minister did say they talked to students, however, which students? They didn't consult the student unions. Ancillary fees will now be optional and student services will be deemed non-essential. They should be essential and here's why. They provide health services, policies like credit no credit due to student voices, provide events and fund stress relievers, clubs, food banks. They help represent students within a community. University and college is not just about grades. You learn and grow through experiences. You're not going to remember what you learned in class or what you spent memorizing for a test. Not to mention that the ancillary fees are less expensive than the essential ones. Why is this important, you might ask? This could be the end of clubs and student unions altogether. Don't believe me? A similar policy was placed in New Zealand, and there are only two student unions left. Oh, and just to mention, recently on February 19th, 2019, Oxford University increased bursaries for low-income students. We don't want to see students being put off because they're worried about the cost of living or their ability to engage with university life. Oxford University.